this is what I'm going to call my honest thoughts, my, my review, as it were, of Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. I am warning you right now that this is not one of those spoiler-free reviews. This isn't even one of those reviews that's going to really probably tell you if you should buy the game or not. I mean, I'll get into that in a moment. But uh, there's going to be a lot of talk about the entire story of Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity from start to finish. If that's not for you, no, don't watch this video. Now, I'm sure you might have already clicked and you're upset by the title. Hey, I don't care. Just going to be honest, I'm someone who seeks out these conversations. I seek out these um, these sorts of titles. I seek out these thumbnails myself as a viewer. I have always said when making content that I should make content that I myself would want to see, would want to view. And I want to see spoilers. I am someone who actively seeks out spoilers. So I actually want videos that have spoilers in the title and spoilers in the thumbnail to make me click, to make me see what's going on. I like that. I've always liked that as a consumer. I've liked that dating back to when I was a kid, even before the internet was that big of a deal. In fact, there were magazines that would put spoilers sometimes in the titles of their articles or in the covers. And that would make me buy those magazines so I could find out more because I can't get enough of spoilers. That's just how I am. So I make content the way that I want content to be made. So if that's not for you, I kindly ask you to direct your viewing pleasure to other channels that will not be doing coverage in this way of video games. Player Essence, Spawn Wave, I think even RGT85 and many others out there will give you that kind of coverage. Beat 'em ups will as well. Like, there's plenty of channels out there that will give you your spoiler-free coverage and maybe not even talk about this stuff. But I'm not one of them. So I'm making the content that I would want to see and view, including titles and thumbnails. Although the title and thumbnail for this one shouldn't be that bad. It is a review after all. Here's the thing. If you just want to know if Age of Calamity is worth your money as a Zelda fan, let's say that you are a big Zelda fan and you've played Breath of the Wild, is Age of Calamity worth the 60 bucks? Yes. Emphatically, yes. It is the greatest, gameplay-wise, Warriors game of all time. There is not a single Dynasty Warriors, One Piece Warriors, Hyrule Warriors, Fire Emblem Warriors. There is not a single Warriors game that is better than this game. There are games that run better. Yes, there are severe frame rate drops in this game. Severe, single digits, sometimes almost one frame or less because there will be times in certain battle situations that it will be like you are watching a stop motion video. I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat it. That happens. Granted, it happens in almost all Warrior games, and if you've ever played a Musou game, you should be expecting it. But I do want to throw out there, yeah, there are other Musou games that performance-wise are better. Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition performs better than this game. Hyrule Warriors uh, Legends on the 3DS, on the new Nintendo 3DS in particular, performs better when it comes to frame rate. But frame rate is not everything. We have talked about in the past that great frame rate and great resolution make games better. Fact. Great resolution and great frame rate do not make good games. You can have a 4K 120 FPS game released right now on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X or PC, but just it being 4K and 120 FPS doesn't actually make it a good game. So, having crappy frame rate does not also make something a bad game. So yes, there's a lot of frame rate issues, but that doesn't make this a bad game. It is still the best Warriors game to date, from the variety of enemies to uh, the variety uh, to how they how they space out the use of some of the bigger enemies like Hinoxes and Lynels, um, and and, and the, the new enemies that get introduced into the fray. Uh, there is a lot to like about the enemy variety in this game, but what really stands out, if you just want to talk about some non-spoiler territory stuff, is the, well, the characters, okay? The characters and how they, how they have combat in the game. The thing is, there is... Every, let me put it this way, I've played a ton of Musou games, from Dynasty Warriors all the way through Hyrule Warriors, uh, Age of Calamity, and the thing is, 
a lot of times there's a lot of repetitiveness with the characters. Characters don't feel different enough. There are differences, but they never really feel different enough. There's a lot of sameness in how the characters play. And yes, you're still just whacking through hordes and hordes of enemies. But there is a ton of variety, whether it's from Zelda and Link or or even Impa, which, again, these are all characters you can play in the demo, or if you're going all the way up to Hetsu, or Teba, or Riju. I mean, these characters are extremely varied. All four of the champions, well, I guess five, since Link's also a champion, control completely differently. Yes, the basic controls are the same. It's still mostly Y and X, Y and X, occasional ZRs thrown in as well. So it's like a three-button combination of attacks, but there's a lot of variety in those attacks. There's also the fact that while every character has the ability to use um, your Sheikah Slate abilities, like in Breath of the Wild, all of them work functionally a little bit different. So everyone has the ability to freeze, magnesis, um, freeze uh, enemies in place, or you know use things like the bombs. But all of these abilities, save like the freezing enemies in place thing, uh, work fundamentally differently with each character. So there's a lot of little nuances you need to learn with how these work. And understandably, they're most powerful with Princess Zelda. She has the most powerful of these abilities because her base attacks aren't necessarily as powerful as some other characters because she's not supposed to be amazing at combat. But she does hold her own just fine, by the way, if you're wondering about that. Zelda is, you can literally play her as like, your lead character for much of the game if you would like so yeah there's that you get to choose which characters you want to use in most missions there's only very specific story-based missions where you have to use certain characters like link there's sometimes when link is not optional so the thing is i fundamentally love this link himself has a varied moveset depending on the type of weapon you're using whether it's a one-hander whether it's a two-hander whether it's a spear these all provide different use cases and different weapon types they even change your zr ability like with a one-hander you use a bow but you don't have a bow with your zr ability with a two-handed weapon so there's, there's just a lot of different um variety of of gameplay i guess in this game in comparison to every other muso game i've ever played including the last hyrule warriors which had a case of feeling a bit same z with some of the characters that's not the case this time around they did a fantastic job adding variety to the combat and variety to the characters and how you approach combat in this game uh and yeah for that reason alone it's the greatest warriors game ever but now we got to get into the story so here's the thing nintendo wrote the story for this game Nintendo said this is the only game where we will be experiencing what happened 100 years before in Breath of the Wild. And the big thing about this story, because this is why a lot of people are picking up this game, is the story, right? Because it's supposed to be a canon story. It's supposed to be a prequel of sorts, right? It's the only game that's ever going to release that happens during the actual Great Calamity. Well, the story is... <laughs> Let's just say it retcons all of Breath of the Wild entirely. It's like Breath of the Wild didn't even happen. So it's interesting because at the very beginning of the game, and you saw this in the demo, you know, you have that scene where that that where that uh, that little mini guardian comes to life and then travels through time. And the moment you see the travel through time aspect, you're like, oh boy, last time we had time travel. Um, that was Ocarina of Time, and when we had that happen, there were split timelines, like, what's going on? Here's time travel. Uh, so, uh, you see that they have traveled back through time and end up partnering up, uh, with, with Zelda and Link. And Impa, and I... <sighs> The thing is, the story unfolds for a, for a huge chunk of the game. I would say about half of the game. The story unfolds exactly like Breath of the Wild describes it, right? You know, you go to each territory and you discover uh, a person there that's going to become the, the champion and, and running one of the divine beasts that's going to help you to stop Calamity Ganon. You're on this journey with Zelda with extra cutscenes that we didn't get in the original game, showing her personal struggles with her inability to access the full power of the Triforce so she can do her part to stop Calamity again. And we see Link's rise to becoming a champion, whereas in Breath of the Wild, he was mostly a champion in all of those memories. We now get to fill in the gaps of all the things that happened to him becoming a champion. We get to see more about the King of Hyrule and King Roan. Like, dude, he is... 
kind of hardened, man. He, he, he's kind of cruel in some ways, but he's hardened by certain events and certain things he's trying to prevent and trying to get Zelda to do right. We get to see uh, a little bit about Zelda's mother. We never get to hear about the mother of Zelda, but we, in this game we do. And while we don't actually see her, the game has one particular scene where it teases, like you're just about to see Zelda's mother, but then it pulls away. We find out that Zelda's love for technology and her curiosity around it came from her mother. And there is the fact that that little egg guardian, hey, she built that. You find that out late in the game. She made that as a child and she forgot because her dad, the king, took it away, thinking it was ruining her focus on trying to find a way to unlock her powers. So she, when, when, when the thing travels back in time to meet with Link and Zelda, Zelda doesn't really remember making it because she did it when she was a little girl. Uh, so it, it, it's, it, it's crazy um, seeing that come full circle. But for a majority of the first half of the game, everything unfolds as you expect it to, right? There's nothing too shocking. Okay, you got all four champions. Uh, you're going to go face off against uh, Calamity Ganon. Oh, no, Calamity Ganon does his things. He makes his blights. The the uh, the champions are all stuck and trapped inside there. Uh, they're now Calamity Ganon controlled, um, you know, Divine Beast. And Link and Zelda are facing off against Calamity Ganon, or at least running from Hyrule Castle in a way, uh, as the king supposedly is killed. Zelda try you know the king saves them and then you know supposedly the king is killed the king doesn't isn't actually killed but we'll find that out in a bit but they're running away and here you are thinking here's the scene it's coming it's coming right here we go this is exactly like Breath of the Wild here come all of the guardians there Link's not gonna be you know Link's gonna do what he can to fight off a, a, a one or two of them but he's gonna get massively injured and then Zelda's gonna step up to protect Link and here we go enter the events of Breath of the Wild and any sort of extra endings because again we knew that there were some uh, interesting endings to this game uh, beforehand maybe they come later maybe they come a few hundred percent of the content maybe it's an alternate ending right the whole ending that retcons the series maybe it's an alternate ending and we start off with the ending of Breath of the so like I was like oh cool we're gonna get the ending that leads to Breath of the Wild and then when you do extra beyond that ending that's when you kind of retcon things and create a second timeline nope Right when you think it's going to happen, it doesn't. Zelda cries. The uh, the, the the guardian um, shoots something up into the sky. The baby guardian that, that that Zelda created shoots something up into the sky that basically brings back uh, the new leaders, uh, the Teba, Riju, etc. Brings back the new leaders of uh, those um, those tribes uh, from Breath of the Wild. Uh, current day Breath of the Wild, back in time to help save Rivali, Urbosa, and all that. And ultimately, they actually fail at it, but what they do is they buy enough time for Link to show up and save the day. And then Link defeats the Blights in present day Hyrule as it exists before Breath of the Wild. So, essentially, everything gets retconned. Uh, Zelda still hasn't discovered her powers yet. Uh, she goes on when they're on the run and they're at like Akala Fortress. Uh, Zelda is all like, yeah, follow me. We're going to dominate. And like, I have unlocked my powers now. And it's just, it's crazy, right? Uh, and it leads into a final confrontation. Now, this entire time the story's going on, you know something's up because there's like this seer, right? There's this magic man who thinks he can control Calamity Ganon to an extent. Um, turns out in the end, he can't control Calamity Ganon. What a shocker. Couldn't see that one coming. That was one of the biggest things that like you just knew was coming the whole time. Um, and even the Yiga clan ends up joining your forces because the Yiga clan was originally helping this seer, but then decides, yeah, no, this isn't good. We can't let Calamity Ganon come back. Uh, so everyone unites at the end. You have you have the you have all four champions, Link, Impa, uh, Zelda, uh, Robbie Pura. You have uh you have the uh, Teba and Riju and, and the rest of the gang from Breath of the Wild there as well. They all team up to ultimately defeat not only this seer, but Calamity Ganon itself. Uh, Calamity Ganon is much more fierce in this game than he ever was in Breath of the Wild. You can definitely tell Breath of the Wild Calamity Ganon if this is um, to be considered canon, which obviously Breath of the Wild is a canon game. But we get to see basically the full might of Calamity Ganon in this game. 
And I want to tell you guys right now, the final confrontation in Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity, regardless of your difficulty mode, from easy all the way up to the hardest difficulty, is way, way harder than the final confrontations. I'm going to use shuns because is that last part with Beast Ganon really a confrontation? It's so easy. Uh, with Ganon or Calamity Ganon in Breath of the Wild makes it look like a joke. The battle against this Calamity Ganon is much more intense. This Calamity Ganon is much powerful. Like, so much more powerful than he ever was in Breath of the Wild. This is like the full might of Calamity Ganon. And you face off against it. And a combination of, obviously, Link and Zelda and the rest get it done. So, you end up sealing away the darkness in the end. Hyrule has peace restored. It, it, it ends up not super destroyed, even though Hyrule Castle is, is destroyed. Uh, the whole world isn't super destroyed, and everything's going good. And then if you 100% the game, basically, it's not really 100%. There's this long quest line after the end of the normal of, of the normal game uh, that you can do to unlock the ability to play as the, the little guardian as its own. Uh, it's okay. And I can't remember the name of the guardian. I think it starts with a T. Um, it, it's just a really random name Zelda throws out there from what I can tell when she was a kid. Uh, you can, there's this long quest you can go to unlock the Guardian. And unlocking the Guardian, so not necessarily 100%ing the game, but it's it's pretty close to 100%ing the game. Uh, unlocks the Guardian, and that unlocks the quote-unquote secret ending, which is basically just a continuation of the, of the ending already given to you after you beat Calamity Ganon. Uh, where everyone, you know, the Teba, Riju, and the rest get, get sent back in time, or, or uh, where they go back to Breath of the Wild, which never happened, so it's, it's weird. Um, this game, oh, in the secret ending, there is there really isn't much additional information. You just get to see some stuff that happens after Calamity Ganon is defeated. Uh, nothing that I find to be too... Like, I was hoping there might be a hint at, like, oh, this is an alternate ending, but here's the thing. Age of Calamity is not the backstory of Breath of the Wild. That's what you find out. This story, written by Nintendo, because it was supposed to be the backstory of Breath of the Wild, because it was supposed to be the backstory of Breath of the Wild, is not actually the backstory of Breath of the Wild. That's the crazy thing. It's not the backstory. What? So, what does this mean? Well, there's really two things. This game is not canon. That's chief thing number one. Maybe this game is not canon. It's just a spinoff. Nintendo, even though they wrote the story, treated it as a spinoff. And despite them teasing things that basically said it was a prequel and canon, it's not. And so it doesn't matter. The game's irrelevant. It's just like the other Hyrule Warriors game. It's, it's your own unique story that just takes place in this certain world of Zelda and it means nothing. Or, and this is probably the more likely scenario... The timeline has split again. And some of the things that happened in this game will be referenced in Breath of the Wild 2. Now, Breath of the Wild 2, we know factually follows up Breath of the Wild. So, this is happening in a timeline where Breath of the Wild happened, and maybe Zelda never cried on the uh, little guardian, and her didn't bring the people back, and then, the, you know, whatever. Like, that's clearly where the split occurs, is when Zelda cries, and the tear hits that guardian. Maybe... That's, you know, where the split occurs, in my opinion. But here's the thing. This is a really good story. I like this story. It's just, I don't like Zelda getting complicated again. And maybe that's just me, but I didn't like this timeline split at Ocarina of Time. I hated it. I hated that timeline split. And I hated it even more when Nintendo just made up a completely, oh, Link died, so that's a new timeline. Like... I didn't like the timeline. I don't like things getting overly complex. But here we go. Nintendo's at it again. Assuming that this game is still considered canon, and we'll know. E AG and Numa will answer questions about it eventually on if it's part of the timeline or not when Breath of the Wild 2 coverage starts to happen. People will clearly ask him about Age of Calamity, and he will let us know if it's part of the timeline or not. So we, we shouldn't have to wait long. We should know within a year if this game is part of the timeline. If it is, then they have created another split timeline situation. And they have reintroduced time travel into the series. So now we need to think about what this is going to mean for Zelda moving forward. Clearly, Breath of the Wild 2 is going to be following up the events of 
the original Breath of the Wild. But does the ending of this game open up another branch that they could start making Zelda games in too if they don't want to keep following down the Breath of the Wild line? See, what was so refreshing to me about Breath of the Wild is it was so far in the future and so clearly a Dragon Break style game where it brought all the timelines together again and they were kind of rebooting the franchise that immediately upon rebooting the franchise, they split the timeline again. I, I, I'm just not a fan of this approach. I, I guess I'm, I'm a, more of a fan of linear story in so much that it makes a lot more sense and we're not debating which timeline games go into. Um, but we're, they just kind of ensure that's going to keep happening if this game is canon. Again, Eiji and Nomu will confirm at some point if this game is part of the timeline or not. But yeah, I'm. <sighs> my feeling at the end of Age of Calamity is both relief because I finally beat it um looking back on me playing it I, I really enjoyed what i played you know i spent 30 40 hours playing this game I loved it loved every minute i played of it the story despite knowing you know what was going to happen because of the leaks uh, before the game came out was still enthralling throughout i still found myself like literally not breathing during certain cutscenes when zelda was speaking specifically like there was moments watching the combat with the champions that I thought for a brief second we were about to see them die, but they didn't. Uh, there was a lot of um, animosity and excitement and um, my, my, my heart going a million miles an hour in the story and all the gameplay. So I love this game. This is probably my favorite video game in 2020. And that's saying a lot because there's so many great games. I also have a bias for Zelda. So here's the thing. I'm still slightly disappointed that there wasn't an ending. Like they could have had this split ending happen and still show us the ending of Breath of the, the ending that leads to Breath of the Wild. Instead, they either retconned it or I, are we going to find out? Like my thing is in Breath of the Wild 2 in the sequel, are we going to find out that it's not that Breath of the Wild itself never happened? Are we going to find out that that's an alternate part of Zelda history that was retconned with this and that they, something, some crazy time traveling crap happens in Breath of the Wild 2 that changes it and makes Breath of the Wild not occur? Like, there's a, so many possibilities here. And maybe this was intentional. Got to remember, A.G. Anumu told us that this was the only game that was going to show us the events that happened before Breath of the Wild. Nintendo wrote the story. I wonder if they are trying to set us up for Breath of the Wild 2 Doing something insane that makes it so Breath of the Wild itself never occurred. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. Like, when these guys time travel back to the past to help the champions, does that actually occur in Breath of the Wild 2, where they end up tra time traveling back? And if it happens then, why does it happen? Does something happen in Breath of the Wild 2 where they need to go back to the past and change what happened? I'm, I'm very, very curious about this. Is what happened in this game going to be explained in Breath of the Wild 2 that they needed to go change the past because of something else? Again, this game could be setting up a lot. So if you're a Zelda fan, love Breath of the Wild, absolutely play it. If you've never played Breath of the Wild, should you play this game before you play Breath of the Wild? Sure, you can. It is a prequel. But I'm going to tell you right now, the backdrop of Breath of the Wild and the cutscenes aren't going to make sense to you. Because this game is going to give you a completely different backstory that doesn't happen in Breath of the Wild, as far as we're aware. Anyways, you guys let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below. This is my review. I honestly think that uh, this is a really good game. This might be the best game on Switch this year. Animal Crossing New Horizons uh, is going to sell better. It's going to be more popular. It's going to have more appeal. Musou games and the kind of combat they do don't have the same sort of appeal. Honestly... This is the best game on Switch in 2020, so you should you should absolutely play it. It should be a must-own game if you're a Switch owner. Uh, if you're you know someone playing you know on other consoles right now, this is a game that maybe you should consider if you decide to get a Switch someday. Uh, of course, you know, Breath of the Wild is a must-have game as well. So, anyways, I'm Nintendo Robo Gents from Nintendo Prime. Let me know what you think about Breath of the Wild. Uh, and obviously Age of Calamity, Hyrule Warriors, down in the comments below. Let's have an in-depth conversation about this story, about every aspect of this game, because, hey, this is not some spoiler-free video, folks. This is my review of Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. I'll catch you guys in 
the next video.